Coming up on the sports desk, dude, let's hit the beach. Bowl, that is. It's been almost 10 years since El Camino College won a bowl game, and we've got blowout the budget coverage of the 2017 Beach Bowl. Plus, we'll have a preview of Ambassador High School Boys Basketball and South High Girls Soccer. The West High Boys Cross Country Team is making headlines, and we'll check in with the Elko Cross Country Teams, too. The Sports Desk begins right now. Welcome everyone to the only sports show designed with the Torrance sports fan in mind, also known as The Desk. I'm your host, A.J. Batone, and before we put on our funny-looking shoes and go bowling, let's take care of some business. Don't forget to hit us up and show us some love on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Share your videos, photos, and story ideas. And as always, remember to use the hashtag TheSportsDeskTV when posting. Bowl game or bust? That's the mantra the El Camino College football team has been using since the season began. The last time the Warriors won a bowl game, the number one song in the country was Live Your Life by T.I. featuring Rihanna, and the number one movie was Twilight. It was the week of November 25, 2008, if you're keeping score, and I know you are. Think about it now. It's been almost 10 years since the Warriors won a bowl game and six years since they last played in one. It's pretty safe to say it was bowl or nothing for the Warriors as they played host to Palomar College in the 2017 Beach Bowl. It was a sunny yet windy 73 degrees at kickoff. El Camino would lead 7-zip after one. End of the second quarter now. El Camino is up by seven, trying to pull away in this one. Cole Clayman, check this out. To Stephon Robinson, a nine-yard gain for the first down. And this would be a developing theme. The two connect again on a 13-yard gain. Clayman to Robinson equals move the chains. And that set up this. Warriors QB Cole Clayman, beautiful pass to the back corner of the end zone. Trevin Clark does the rest. Trust me, he's there. It's a 22-yard hookup. El Camino would lead 21-7 to at the half. Third quarter now. Palomar College doing all they can to put the rock in the end zone. Comets QB Matt Romero airs it out. Great pass. Wrong target. It's Elko's James Randolph. He's been doing this all season long. Second interception on the day for the Warriors. Still third quarter. Still 21-7 El Camino. Again, it's Matt Romero. And again, he's intercepted. Mike Mason. Elko's third INT. Neither team would score in the third quarter. We move to the fourth. It's still 21-7 Elko. Curry Thompson bustles his way into the end zone for the Comets. The score is now 21-14 Warriors. A little over a minute later. Cole Clayman fakes the handoff to Jacoby Hardy and decides to throw the deep ball. Our videographer was still recovering from the fake handoff, apparently. Anywho, the ball is tossed 74 yards to Trevin Clark, and he is G.O. any good and plenty gonzo. Look at that. Clark's second TD of the game. Elko lead 28-14. Wouldn't last, though. Palomar making this beach bowl interesting. Isaac Aguero punches it in from two yards out. It's now just a seven-point game. Elko leads 28-21 to with 9.46 to go. But this right here, my friends, was the story of the 2017 Beach Bowl. El Camino's wide receiver, Stephon Robinson. Dude's game was straight fire. This is a 68-yard reception here. Robinson made six catches for 170 yards and averaged 28.3 yards per catch, earning him the Beach Bowls MVP award. And thanks to that performance, the El Camino College Warriors win their first bowl since 2008. Coach Lindheim hosting the trophy in the air. What a great scene afterwards. Congrats to the 2017 Beach Bowl champion. Warriors win by the final of 28 to 21. As I mentioned, the MVP was Stephon Robinson, who racked up 170 yards on six catches. Robinson also broke the school's single season receiving record with 1,274 yards on 62 catches, breaking the previous record, if you're keeping score, set by Marcel Reese in 2005. 
The game's offensive MVP was Cole Klayman, who finished with 265 yards and two touches. After the game, I caught up with Klayman, Coach Lindheim, and of course, the man of the hour, the record-breaking Robinson. Share with me some of the things that you're thinking about right now at this very moment. I mean, what I'm thinking right now, um, a lot of hard work this season. We had a lot of uh, close losses, but we overcame it with this victory today. So I'm just grateful for it. I'm just blessed to be a part of it. And we worked so hard this season, and we, we made history today. And you can't be mad at that. Stefan, he just got the record for all-time receiving yards in El Camino history. He is, he's the best receiver I play with. I mean, that's, that's just being honest. And he's a great, a great guy, great work ethic, and, you know, it's obvious he's not the biggest guy, but he's got the biggest heart. I think for us all year, you know, when we get turnovers, it ignites us, and I think we play much better when we get turnovers. We turned the ball over a lot, but getting turnovers was re really crucial for us tonight, and uh, and uh, it, it ignited us. Uh, as it turns out, uh, ended up in, in the last possession of the game, trying to win the game, and it was so nice to, to win a last possession game because we've lost uh, – <laughs> Four of the five losses were in the last possession. So it was nice to win one of these, and it couldn't, couldn't be better, a bowl game. Something that I wanted to do was really build something here. My, my mom went here. I have a lot of family went to El Camino. It means a lot to me, you know what I mean, doing it for, uh, for the school that's given me an opportunity to uh, you know, achieve my dreams. So I'm really super thankful for my opportunity here. As I mentioned earlier, the Warriors hadn't played in a bowl game since 2011 when they fell to Mount San Antonio in the National Bowl. The last time they hosted a bowl game was 2009, and the last time they won a bowl game was, of course, 2008, when they defeated Saddleback in the American Bowl. As you can imagine, the entire El Camino College family was stoked to go bowling again, and according to Colin Preston, the school's director of athletics, this is a huge turning point for the program, and everyone was pretty confident the season would end exactly the way it did with a bowl game. Playing with the numbers probably from week six on, looking at what we needed to do. And we had five real close losses with, you know, the top five teams in Southern California. So we knew we deserved to be in a bowl game. We knew we had the talent to play in a bowl game. You know, we were beyond excited. And that's what our players the whole year were talking about. You know, we're going to a bowl game. So, you know, same with our cat, uh, with our coaches, that, that mentality was bowl game or bust the whole whole, whole year for us. The man largely responsible for El Camino's bowl victory was, of course, the game's most valuable player. It should come as no surprise that Stefan Robinson broke the receiving record held by Marcel Reese. After all, Robinson has been Mr. Consistent all season long. We all know what he did in the Beach Bowl, so let's focus our attention now on what he accomplished during the regular season. Sports Desk reporter Cedric Welton takes us on a field trip now to Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. Many athletes have graced the field at Murdoch Stadium. Not all have had immediate impact like Stefan Robinson, a motto of consistency all season. It's no wonder why he's reaping such success. Stefan's unbelievable. He's uh, uh, not only a super talented uh, player, but um, uh, works really hard and uh, has a great energy and attitude about him, goes to everything, makes sure he does a hard worker in the weight room, hard worker in, in the classroom. Uh, he's dynamic. Basically, I just work hard and prepare as a team, and then when we go out there, we execute. And that's what I thrived on for my whole career in football. In just his first season, Stefan already leads the team in catches, receiving yards, as well as touchdowns. And he's actually on pace to leave his name within the all-time ranks at El Camino College. Uh, he's 24 yards short of, of being the all-time leading receiver at El Camino College. So uh, this, is, this could be a big game for him. It's an extreme honor just to even be mentioned with uh, players in El Camino history. I didn't even know. So. While modest in speech, you can't help but notice Stefan in the field of play. How he impacts this offense is undeniable. Coach Lindeheim and Stefan reflected on his development over the course of this season. The best thing about Stefan is not only his talent, but his consistency. And uh, each week he's been a reliable guy uh, who's carried us uh, through portions of games where, where um, you know, we've had definite highs and lows, but Stefan is a constant in terms of his ability and his, uh, to make plays and, and his attitude. I believe like my uh, detail to the game like, I know the holes in the defense, and I just tackle them. And then when I get the ball, I just get upfield, do my best, help my team win. 56 receptions, 1,104 receiving yards, eight touchdowns. Stephon Robinson is just an exciting athlete to watch. Reporting from Murdoch Stadium, I'm Cedric Welton for the Sports Desk. And Mr. Robinson has the record now. Cedric, thank you. The football team at El Camino College isn't the only team tasting the postseason. 
The women's volleyball team finished the regular season clinching a share of the South Coast Conference South Division Championship. As a result, the Warriors earned the 11th seed in the State Community College playoffs, and right now they're headed to face six-seeded Bakersfield in the first round. Of course, none of this would have been possible if it weren't for this lady right here. Sophomore Iko Waters was recently named the co-MVP of the South Coast Conference. Waters led the SEC in kills with a total of 290 and kills per set with 3.63. She ranked 19th overall in the entire state for kills per set and 22nd for total kills. And check this out. Waters isn't the only one getting some love from the SEC. First-year head coach Liz Hazel was named co-head coach of the year. She led the Warriors to a stellar 19-4 overall record so far. And Jalen Motley, Renee Bryden, and Kiana Takahashi received first-team honors. While Jarafina Leilua, Sarah Dyer, Kylie Morimoto, and Glorious Owens were second team selections. All right, we're going to take a quick time out here on the desk. But whatever you do, don't go anywhere because you won't want to miss this. Coming up next, Cedric Welton previews the 2017 Ambassador Boys basketball team. And Anthony Scott offers the same for the girls soccer team at South High. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Remember to follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Share your story ideas, post your photos and videos. We want to hear from you, Torrance. After all, this is your show, so be sure to get involved. All right, the South Coast Conference wasn't finished handing out hardware to our friends at El Camino College. Let's just say there were plenty of accolades to share with the women's soccer team. Headlined, of course, by freshman sensation Maddie Simone's number six here in this video, Simones was tied for second in the SEC South Division for goals scored and third for shots taken and points. The crafty forward led the Warriors this past season with a total of 25 points along with a dozen goals. Joining Simones on the South Division first team, defenders Taylor Herm and Jennifer Vargas. And it doesn't stop there. Goalkeeper Isabel Rojas, defender Ashley Lopez, and midfielder Jody Brennan round out the second team selections from Elk. And while we're on the topic of soccer, the girls' team over at South High is gearing up for another season. Last season, the Spartans had a magical run that finished with a perfect 8-0 record in league play. Here now is Sports Desk reporter Anthony Scott with more on the defending state champion Spartans. The South High girls' soccer team is coming off of a remarkable 2016 season where they overcame obstacles on and off the field on their way to a state championship. Now the Spartans regroup as they get ready to see what they can accomplish this season. We've won CIF um, a handful of times. The last time we won it was in 2014. Um, that was my first year coaching. So to do that again was awesome. And then to, to go on and win state was even better. Our team was like super close. Like we were like a family. And I feel like that was like one of the major like reasons how we got there. It was a special season. Um, I think it showed them, you know, how how awesome kind of high school sports can be. The school's gonna remember that. You know, their their banners up in the gym and it'll be there forever. After winning a championship last season, South High is the team to beat in girls high school soccer. They're gonna have a big target on their back all season long. It it puts a little bit of pressure on them. You know, it it, it makes them I think there's that constant kind of nagging in the back of your head of you know, we do need to work hard. We've got something to prove. Um, everybody's out for us, um, but you know, it kind of makes it a little bit fun. South High lost a lot of important seniors from last year's squad, including Claire Grauwinkel, who won the player of the season last year. Now South High will try and replace those seniors with a lot of new young talent. I definitely think the seniors last year brought a, definitely an elite level to the game. Like they, all of the seniors last year were extremely talented. They had really good footwork. You know, beautiful shots, like they really read the game super well. Um, so definitely losing that was a bummer, but you know, we've got a bunch of new people coming in, so it's definitely going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely going to miss Claire's speed. Um, we lost some really good center midfielders, um, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. We have a lot of um, like underclassmen mm -hmm. 
And there's not a lot of seniors, so I know they're going to look up to us for, like, leadership. So that's a big role to fill because we had quite a few seniors last year. And I know I looked up to them. So I'm excited for the new responsibilities. I always want to see the seniors step up. Mm -hmm. um, this year we only have three. They're the leaders on this team. They're the oldest ones. They've been here the longest. But at the same time, that's not to say that nobody else can. You know, you might get a sophomore or a junior or even a freshman that, that just, that's what they do. They step up and they they lead and they lead by example. So we'll see what happens. We are a younger team, but I think some of our strengths are that we're really good um, off the ball. We have a lot of movement from a lot of the players. We're a young team. Um, and I think in terms of strength, it's good because we can kind of mold those players uh, into what we want to get out of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a weakness because they are young. We've got five freshmen on the team this year, which, you know, some schools look and they go, oh, young team, you yeah. know, rebuilding year. But um, I, don't, I don't think it is. I think it's just a matter of coming to them coming together. There's a lot of excitement surrounding the South High girls soccer team this season after they won a championship the year before. However, there are a lot of new faces on the Spartan team, and it may take some time for them to return to their championship level of play. The Spartans open up the season next Tuesday when they take on Longdale. Reporting from South High, I'm Anthony Scott for the Sports Desk. Anthony, many thanks. The previews continue. We turn our attention to high school boys basketball now. The Lions of Ambassador High were quite young last year, and they certainly had their fair share of growing pains, which was to be expected, of course. The Lions finished 4-16 and overall and 3-7 and in league play. Sports Desk reporter Cedric Welton tells us what we can expect from this year's Lions. We're here at Ambassador High, and the Lions are gearing up for boys varsity basketball. The Lions are coming off a disappointing season and looking to bounce back and show these other schools what they're made of. Last season, the Lions were inexperienced as they were in the middle of a youth movement. This season, players are looking to apply the lessons they learned on the court a year ago. Coach Adam Talley spoke on the team's expectations. This year, we're really expecting some of our younger guys to step up. We have two senior leaders um, who are really hoping that they're going to be able to pass down all that they've learned through being in the program these past few years um, and really just be a teacher to our younger players as they're coming up to develop them. The Lions are led by senior captains Marcos Bodoya and Steven Barker. I spoke with each player about their team role and how they plan to anchor this unit this season. So my role is basically to lead the team. So right now I'm not really screaming a lot, but like every time someone messes up, they usually come to me and talk to me about it. I usually just try to be nice and lead them into the right direction. As a player, my goal is really to be the best defensive player out there. Being a senior, I... Um, I accept a lot more responsibility as a leader on, on the court, which is understandable. And coach is really expecting me to step up and motivate the guys and talk to them when they're having trouble and not just kind of focus on my own game, but really focus on the rest of the team. With the season approaching and the young Lions hungry for their first game, Coach Talley stressed the importance of unity while developing players and the identity they're trying to forge at Ambassador High. Our goals this season, we're just trying to establish ourselves as a team, establish our culture, our team culture, and continue that into the future. So we're looking to be hard workers. We're looking to be scrappy out there on the floor. We're looking to push the ball hard, run hard, and just outwork our opponents. The Lions will kick off the upcoming basketball season on the road as they take on Eastside Christian. Reporting from Ambassador High, I'm Cedric Walton for the Sports Desk. Cedric, thanks. How about some basketball scores now? The El Camino men's team fell to Santiago Canyon in the championship game with a Skip Robinson classic. Troy Biglow led the way with 17 points in 17 minutes. Warriors are now 2-4 and four on the season. Meanwhile, the women haven't lost a game yet this season. The Warriors are a perfect 5-0 oh, thanks to a 63-59 win over L.A. Valley. Kayla Bibb led Elko with 20. Okay, we're going to take one last pause, but I wouldn't go anywhere if I were you because you won't want to miss this. Still to come, it's cross-country time. Danny Miskell has the skinny on the El Camino men's and women's teams, and Anthony Scott has the latest on the West High boys team. Stay with us. Alexa, how do you tell if asparagus is still good? If it's not moldy or slimy, it's okay to eat. Enable the new skill from Save the Food on your Amazon Alexa and help fight food waste. Welcome back. This next story is brought to you by the number 29. Dean Lofgren has been coaching the cross-country program at El Camino College for 29 years. And in that time, the men's team has made 29 state championship appearances. Not too shabby. Sports Desk reporter Danny Miskell has the latest on an incredible run 
in more ways than one. El Camino's men's cross-country team has had an incredible season. They just went to the regionals last week and are now ranked sixth in Southern California. I got to speak with Coach Lofgren and runner Carson Bix about the team and their overall performance. So we knew from the start that we would, uh, we would be a very solid team and uh, we started out solid, we've remained solid. The men's team is mostly comprised of freshmen and they share a local bond from having raced each other in high school. So it's pretty safe to say these guys know each other. So our top four are all local from Miracosta, Torrance, West, from me. So I think we are able to get our chemistry down early and just focus on ourselves and improve. For Carson and the rest of the freshmen, they've had to adjust to the JUCO level, which means running at least an average of 60 miles per week. The coaching is different, the training is different, so it's something you just got to adapt to. A different style of workouts, a lot more endurance based, and in my high school we would do a lot more speed based. Mm -hmm. So it's just different adaptations that I need to get used to. And that training paid off. The Warriors ran solid races at regionals and placed sixth. Carson finished at 21 minutes and 33 seconds and was barely outran by his fellow teammate Michael Yaskowitz, who finished a tenth of a second sooner. Top two gentlemen for our team, uh, Carson Bix and Michael Yaskowitz, have been uh, kind of been neck and neck with each other and, and helping each other throughout the season. Regionals, we did really solid. Um, Michael, uh, he moved up. He finished ahead of me. We went seventh and eighth. We had a really solid front team. The Warriors have qualified and will be advancing to the state championships this weekend, which will be held up in Fresno at Woodward Park. Elko is one out of four South Coast Conference teams to advance to the state championships. They plan to keep their position in the top six and hope to move up into the top five, along with their individual goals. I want to be top ten, and I think our next guy, Michael, who is sometimes in front of me, I think we should both be top ten. With this being the men's 29th consecutive year returning to the state championships, they're confident that in this race, they will rise to the occasion. They just know that they have to run a smart strategic race and put themselves in a position to place as high as they can individually and as a team. Personally, I think uh, we have still have yet to see the best races from a couple of them. So if we do happen to get those best races from them here on Saturday at the state championships, we're going to end on a really, really good note. Reporting from Murdoch Stadium, I'm Danny Miskell for the Sports Desk. Okay, check this out. So the men's team placed seventh overall in the state championship meet, while the women's team, who've made 28 state title appearances, by the way, finished 11th overall. And now with more on the Elko women's team, here again is Danny Miskell. El Camino's women's cross-country team has been working so hard this season. They qualified to compete in the regional championships last week, and I got to speak with Coach Lofgren and runner Sarah Simpson about what this means for them and where they are headed to next. Regionals, we um, qualified for state, which is something that I've never gotten to do before. So to be able to finally say that I'm going to state is a really cool thing. Qualifying for state was a process that started this summer, and these girls decided early on to step their training up a notch. And then they actually met an additional couple days a week. They knew that uh, in order to develop to the point of where they wanted to be, they needed more than just our four days of the summer class. So they've been working hard and working well together. And together, they advanced to Racer Regionals. Out of 187 runners, freshman Savannah Sahunik finished the 5K run in 21st place, clocking in at 20 minutes and 7 seconds. Sarah Simpson came in at 84th place at 21 minutes and 46 seconds. The regional meet, we were uh, we placed 11th out of uh, 28 teams. So we are trying to maintain that position going into state. The girls now turn their attention to the state championships, where their sights are set on that finish line. We are hoping to hold our spot from Southern California and maybe even uh, move a little bit forward and go into the top 10 here at the state championship. I asked Sarah what goes through her mind for those 3.1 miles and how she is able to stay motivated through all the obstacles. Being negative uh, doesn't help you at all. I would say I've changed that by being more strategic and thinking about what I need to do in the moment, whether it's like passing a certain girl from a certain team or counting the places um, ahead of me or accelerating around a corner or using a downhill. Um, 
dropping my arms, just certain strategic things that I can focus on in the moment to help contribute to the finish. It's been a hard-earned six months of training, and now the wait is over. The women are ready as they'll ever be to compete at state. I know it's going to end on a good note, just a matter of how good. Um, they've worked really well together, they've communicated well, they train hard together. We are running for each other and we can't achieve anything without each other. There's no reason why this shouldn't be our best race of the season. AJ, the girls are really looking forward to returning to Fresno this weekend, you know, because last year was the first time in 28 consecutive years that they didn't qualify to compete for the state championships. So as you can imagine, for them to be returning this weekend is going to be extra special. Reporting from Murdoch Stadium, I'm Danny Miskell for the Sports Desk. Danny, thank you. The West High School boys cross country team is ranked second in the state right now. Recently, the Warriors won their third straight CIF title, and now they're preparing for a trip to Fresno to compete for the state title. Sports Desk reporter Anthony Scott has more. After finishing second in the state last season, the boys cross country team here at West High has one thing on their mind this year, and that's to win. The Warriors have already won the Pioneer League championship, and now they turn their attention to the state title. For the last two years, we've been the favorite going into the state meet, and we took third two years ago and last year second. So, you know, kind of, it's kind of tough when you end every season with kind of a sour note. We really want state. These past two years, uh, we've got third and second, and both times we felt like we should be able to win it. The Warriors recently finished first in the CIF preliminaries, and that victory has given the team even more confidence going forward. At prelims, our plan was to open quickly um, for Rory and I, who um, were pacing up at the front, and then relax as soon as we knew we were qualifying. Then we ended up advancing first in our heat. Well, at prelims we ran, uh, I think it was only about three guys that are originally from the varsity team. So we, we ran another, some of the JV guys, and we still got first, so that gives us a lot of confidence. West High doesn't have one or two runners that dominate the competition. Instead, the Warriors have five or six solid runners that stick together and run as a team. Obviously, we don't tell them to slow down, but we do strategize to get out, find your teammate, get beside him, because there's a comfort value. In the last race, we grouped up together to help each other. That's the the main point of running together. I mean, we do it in practice. We know how fast each other are. Yeah. So when it comes to the race, we know, well, I should be able to stick with this guy. And if we stick together, we're, we'll be tough to beat. In cross country, it's only your fifth runner that really matters. You can have three good guys and one bad fifth runner, and you're not doing anything. I think they've all pretty much have been around long enough to know that they can't do it by themselves. So for them to sacrifice a little bit of their time, it's not a big deal anymore. Mm -hmm. This year's Warriors squad is loaded with seniors and they know what it feels like to come in second. This year they came in motivated from day one to make sure that they come home with the gold. Finishing in second is always a great accomplishment, but it was a little rough because we really wanted to win. We learned a lot from it, being in that high stakes race, being the favorites, how to carry that on our shoulders, and hopefully we can do better this year. We're all hungry. Um, we feel like we've been counted out, counted out too many times, and we think that the third time's the charm and this year's gonna be the year. Being seniors, They've all been on the state course, they've run, they know what it feels like to lose, so there's a little bit extra motivation. It's been obvious that from day one of the season, the West High Warriors have been motivated to take down the state title. The Warriors have already had a very successful season, and now all their attention is turned onto the state championships, which take place the Saturday after Thanksgiving on November the 25th. Reporting from West High, I'm Anthony Scott for the Sports Desk. Anthony, thank you. Congrats to them and congrats also to the South High Girls Cross Country team. They also qualified for the state championship recently. Okay, that does it for this week's edition of the Sports Desk. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we appreciate your support. My name is A.J. Vatone, and I've seen, heard, and said enough for one week. We'll continue this conversation again next week, I promise. Until then, don't forget to follow the Sports Desk on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and remember, you can email us as well. We'd love to hear from you. That's all the time we have, sports fans. We'll catch you next time right here on the Sports Desk.